Pixel art is the original digital art. So I want it to return to the beginning of digital art. Because that's pretty much what I only do. Pixel art was used in video games and computers with graphical limitations. And today it's not used as much, but it still is used in some video games that I've played and some I haven't. But there's a lot of really good games still in that style. Gives it that retro feel and I think it's really cool. So recently I picked up a program called A Sprite on Steam earlier this year. The program was something I've heard about and I've seen a few projects from it. And I thought some of them were cool. I liked how the style of it. It's not always what I want, but I think it's an interesting style. I wanted to apply my landscape painting skills to pixel art. So I started out trying to make a simple mountain. The colors are alright, but the problem was I couldn't get the colors to work the way I wanted them to. And it turns out I was using the index color mode, which gave me more limited colors which had 8 bits per pixel. The one that I ended up using later used um, 32 bits per pixel, so quite a bit more. But for style reasons, you could use other options. I honestly don't see anybody else making it with the other options. Let me know if you know somebody who does that, but I don't think, I don't think that's a thing. I moved on to another Simple mountain, but this time with more colors. I put in a gradient in the sky and then painted the mountains, blocking basic shadows to give the mountain some depth. And then I painted the grass and added some trees to give a sense of perspective. Finally, the clouds. Simple, right? Yeah, if they're not moving. It's really hard if they're moving. So I decided, oh, just moving the clouds should be pretty easy. Just a simple drag them across the screen to the shape of it. And it was hard to figure out because I already had, I was on one layer and I need to add out the sky layer and the mountain layer and then a cloud layer that goes in between it so I, you could see that they were going behind it. So as I was working on this animation, I got to a certain point where it's like, oh, I just dragged it across the screen, but there was nothing else that was behind it. So it had a straight cut off on the animation. So what I did is I expanded the border of it so I could paint out the clouds without having them be cut off. And then I got to the end of it after I animated the whole thing. And the the second group of clouds that I did was one pixel down, one pixel off. So it just, every time it restarted, it would jump. So that was a little frustrating. I don't really want to go back and fix it at this point. And then I got stuck where I wanted to edit the mountain. Because I didn't like a certain section of it. But I couldn't figure out how to keep that on the same layer. What I was supposed to do is link the, the frames or the cells in that layer for each frame. So they were all the same. But I didn't know... To do that early on so what i ended up doing is copying and pasting each layer which didn't take too long because you could just control c control v and just do the whole thing and it would only do it in that layer so i think that one was a pretty cool animation even though the clouds weren't very dynamic they were they were pretty stiff but i was i was proud of myself when i did that and then i decided it would probably be helpful to get used to the colors by just doing a study so I got out a reference photo and I, I started doing a study of, of some mountains because that's what I like to paint. It's something in my comfort zone. It's easy to learn that way. Sometimes it's better to push your comfort zone. It was a reference that I've done before in Photoshop. I thought it would look nice as a pixel art because it is a really nice photo. But one problem I ran into working on this study is a sprite kept crashing every time I would go to adjust the brush size or the eraser size but only with my tablet not with my mouse every time I wanted to change the size I had to switch over and get my mouse out and adjust it which wasn't too hard I could kind of do that with my left hand while I'd, I paint it with my right hand and I I did this study in 320 by 180 because I some research looking on to find the like the best monitor size or screen size with the same aspect ratio so I could upscale to that 
without losing the detail, like enough, like enough to be detailed, but not to be, um, not lose the pixel look of it. Now I'm moving on to my, my final painting for this project. And this one was kind of a headache. I mean, once I got the base painting down, that was actually pretty easy for me to do because it's just, I already knew how to paint, so it wouldn't take that long. But I, it took me a little time to figure out the composition. I had to sketch in the lines, put a gradient in the sky that always makes it look more realistic. Cause it, the sky tends to be darker, higher up you look. And more towards the horizon, it looks more thin and light. But I think this, I think the painting came out well. I just, I wasted like several hours trying to animate it. And then I got to the clouds and I like, I was painting it all on one layer again. And I decided I animated the clouds before I can do this again. And that became a nightmare. <laughs> I already made the mistake of doing what I did in the first one where I didn't plan it out. And what I would do instead is I would separate the layers as I worked so I wouldn't have to re redo them or re-maneuver the layers because it's really hard to adjust the layers. There might be a way of moving the layers, but I couldn't figure out how to do it. If I could just slide the layers around, that would be way easier. But it seemed like you make the layers and they just are where they are. The only workaround is just make a new layer, and copy and paste what you want. That's what I did, but it's also just painful to do it that way. So try and make your layers separate if you're going to do this. I ended up scrapping it because the clouds look too stiff, so I'm just... It's not worth it, so I'm going to figure something else out. Or I'm, I'm just not going to animate this one. They, they did get them to move, but then I ended up not liking them. So I ended up like scrapping them in the end. So I wanted to learn how to animate a little bit more in this program. So I went and found some tutorials on an Ace Sprite, and I found one that was how to animate a fire. And I spent at least an hour on that. I think it could have come out better, but I think it was pretty cool how it looks. And I was pretty happy with that. So after I learned the, how to make a fire and just kind of basic animation principles of the ice sprite, I don't know if they're the correct way of doing it. There's probably more than one way of doing it. As all art forms are, there's more than one way of doing it. But then I applied that knowledge to a little cloud that I was trying to make a spin, kind of have it go in a circle. And I had it go in a circle around a mountain I thought that would be kind of cool just to see a little cloud move around. I didn't shade it or anything, but I was really happy with that too. I thought it was cool. Then I tried messing around with just some clouds moving by. And I had a basic one that, again, no shading, just to kind of figure out the animation loop. And it kind of worked. And then I took it a step further by, by doing another one in a smaller frame so I could animated a lot faster. I think this was a like I started out bigger then I shrunk it down to a hundred by a hundred and then I had a looping cloud that looked believable because it changed shapes as it went and I also put it over some water and added a shadow to it not not really shade it but just to give it more believability. In conclusion learning new things can be hard but very rewarding. Making still paintings is not hard for me because I already had the experience with the painting. The real learning I did was the animation. I tried something on my own and then went and found a tutorial. Learned something there and applied it to what I was struggling with. And it worked! I was happy with the results and I think they were well worth the effort. HBrite may look like a simple program but can do a lot. I know there's more to this program and I'm just scratching the surface.